Good morning. It's such a pleasure to be here with you today. I am such a big fan of NOVA, and my only wish is that we were able to be together today, but I'm looking forward to that in the future. My name is Susan Max Salmon, and I am the Executive Director of the International Arts and Mind Lab at Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine, and I'm also the co-director of the Neuro Arts Blueprint. This is a project that um, is co-developed with the Aspen Institute, and I'll share more about that with you in a moment. I wanted to tell you a little bit about the lab at Hopkins. My lab is located in the School of Medicine, and our work is really focused on the interdisciplinary translational research to practice around how the arts change our brains and bodies. And we're very interested in thinking about the role of arts and aesthetics for health, well-being, and learning. And our lab works in three different areas. We have a research component where we are actually conducting research on a number of different issues using a model called impact thinking. We also do quite a bit of work of community building at Hopkins, uh, in our local community, in the country, and also around the world. And then we have an outreach and education program and do a number of programs that are around um, helping to work with graduate students and also professional development in the field. So most of my talk today is going to be geared around the neuro arts blueprint. Uh, when I last worked uh, and shared the work of the lab and the blueprint with, no with Nova, uh, I shared a bit about uh, the launch of the Blueprint, which happened last December, really just about this time last December. Since that time, we have uh, been very productive in really beginning to bring the Blueprint to life. So I'm going to walk through some of the things that we've done there and, and give a time frame of how the implementation of the Blueprint will happen over the next five years. So to level set, the Blueprint's goal is to ensure that the arts and the uses of the arts in all of its many forms can become part of mainstream medicine and public health. And we define neural arts as the study of how arts and aesthetic experiences measurably change the body, brain, and behavior, and how this knowledge can be translated into specific practices that advance health and well-being. Neural arts is really found at the intersection of arts, technology, health, and well-being. We think each of these different disciplines have an opportunity to come together to really advance the work and to create dissemination and scaling around the world. When we think about research in this area, I wanted to share a little bit about what we call ways of knowing. So certainly we're very interested in basic science and clinical research. And that's really what we think of when we talk about um, this idea around generalized knowledge. And that's super important. We also are interested in foundational knowledge or lived experience, uh, the idea around uh, experiential learning, indigenous or ancestral ways, even spiritual and natural ways of knowing. And then the artistic knowing, what do artists and storytellers, dancers and visual arts and all the other art forms, expressive writing, what do they tell us about the way the arts change us and how we can use that in service of health, well-being and learning. And then practical knowledge, really looking at how the work plays out, general knowledge about how practice is happening. So we use all of these different ways of knowing when we're thinking about what is evidence and what is knowledge that it can inform and build a very generative practice. So last year, when the Blueprint was released, we came out with five core recommendations. The first was to strengthen the research foundation of neural arts. There's a lot of research in the field, but there's, off, there's an opportunity to be able to close some of the gaps around the way that we uh, report the findings, look at outcome measures, think about the kinds of methodologies that are really being engaged across all the different domains that are doing research. The second, which is extremely important, is to honor and support the many arts practices that promote health and well-being. And that can be from arts and health to community arts, creative arts therapies, thinking about the way psychology and psychiatry use the arts, how rehabilitation uses the arts, how the arts are used in many of the places that we all go, including school or cultural arts organizations. How can we help to support those practitioners? The third is to expand and enrich educational and career pathways across the continuum of, of the practitioners that are using the arts, regardless of the art form. And then to advance and advocate for sustainable funding and promote effective policy. This is an area where there's quite a bit of opportunity for growth. 
And then last is to build capacity, leadership, and communication strategies. And this is, again, across all domains. Um, communication strategies need to be different for practitioners as opposed to policymakers. We are really working to understand what different constituencies need to hear in order to really change the, the lever, make movement in the field. So our three priority areas over the next five years are building infrastructure, building evidence, and building community. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that. In building infrastructure, we are looking to build a neural arts resource network. This is really the glue. I think of it as the watering hole for the field. It's where it's a hub. It's where all of our artists, practitioners, researchers, advocacy groups, funding organizations, all of these groups can come together to be able to find each other, meet each other, learn about what each other are happening, breaking down the silos that currently exist. This project is now underway and will be, will be implemented um, and up and running in about a year. The second is to develop an academic research consortium. This is looking around the world at bringing together the different types of academic research consortiums or centers that are doing really interesting work in this area so that we can begin to look at consistencies around education, looking at the way research is being conducted. So this could be in schools of medicine, it could be in schools of public health, it could be in arts and sciences, it could be in any domain area where there is a concentration of interest in this idea around neuro arts. The third is assembling a community neural arts coalition. This is at the local level. So we have had many organizations reach out to us in different cities around the world who have already started to coalesce research, cultural arts organizations, practice, practices, and communities need to be able to work at a local level to really create infrastructure that's viable and nece necessary to be able to really build the com a local community, thriving neuro arts community to, to meet the needs of the community. And the last is, is to really build on a research advisory board that will come out of the academic research consortium that will allow us to be able to assess what research is being done and how it's being done so that we have a very clear understanding of research methodology so that others in the future can really build on that research. In building evidence, we are working in four core areas. The first is neurodegeneration, second is rehabilitation, mental health and child development. And over the next several years, we'll be producing a number of foundational white papers to provide more baseline information about the field. We are currently conducting a true value economic analysis and are laying groundwork to develop an arts brain map that identifies the neurobiology, knowledge and gaps and benefits of understanding how the brain works on the arts and aesthetic experiences, and also looking to develop a arts practice global map as we build this neuro arts resource hub. In building community, we, are, we believe that this neuro arts resource network really will be the watering hole. And we see that as a huge initiative, but along the way, we're also building and developing messaging for key audiences. We're going to be creating and implementing inclusive communication strategies. And we hope to be hosting a global neuro arts convening shortly. We are also doing a number of webinars right now to make sure that the community stays in touch with what the neuro arts blueprint is doing. And in building capacity, we're starting to work with a number of professional organizations to develop a neuro arts curriculum and expand community-based training. Uh, we're also looking at the development of research and practice awards and fellowship programs that will build rec will recognize excellence in the neuro arts field and develop a policy framework and sustainable funding pathways in the field. This capacity building for policy frameworks and sustainable funding pathways we're now just beginning. What we've done over the last year is to make sure that we have the evidence and the practice community really coming together and coalescing as we start to look at what are the strategies for policy and strategies for building long-term public and private funding. And finally, we're building the field together. And so as this field grows, we invite you to come to the NeuroArts Blueprint website. Please send us your comments and ideas, sign up for the newsletter, join the webinars, partner with the Blueprint Action Steps, tell us about your resource network that can best benefit you, and please be an ambassador for the NeuroArts field. I really appreciate the time together to be able to be with you today. I think we all believe that together we can make the world feel better. Thank you.